Do you use Magic Lantern to record raw video and you get Moire pattern? Let me tell you what you can do about it. Easiest way to get around this problem is to use crop mode. That essentially means that your set resolution is corresponding to one to one pixel area on your sensor. But the problem is that 700D sensor is 18 megapixels, but because of limitations, you can only record a small portion of that. So activating crop mode will remove aliasing, but the image will be zoomed in. For some people, this is good trade-off, but being zoomed in means you're not utilizing your full angle of view. Some people may want their wide angle lenses to record a wide angle. This is the reasoning behind 3x3 three three binning mode. This is essentially the standard mode when you turn on raw recording. It means the camera will record one out of every three lines vertically and horizontally and bin those pixels together. This uses a larger area of the sensor and utilizes more of your lens. But this is also the reason for the Moria pattern. I just wanted to make this video to show you a clever trick that Magic Lantern developers could come up with. There is a way to avoid more rare and also use a larger field of view, but it also comes with drawbacks. This solution comes in form of 1 by 3 binning. It means vertical lines will be read normally, but all horizontal lines will be binned together. This way you can avoid more rare and get better detail than the standard 3 by 3 modes. But the price you have to pay is that you have to write more data at a higher rate to your SD card. You will also have to rescale those files in post. Even using lossless compression, you will still need to be able to record at a higher than 70 megabits per second. So you will need to lower resolution a bit. To achieve usable resolution on my camera, I'm using Bilal's build for Magic Lantern, where he included a new crop mode, link in the description. I highly advise you to read the instructions on how to use that build because it can be a bit fiddly to get your head around it. It is essentially the fringes of possibilities and a lot of options that are available are experimental and can cause glitches, freezes and shutdowns or worse. Using Magic Lantern you can activate lossless compression to save some of the bandwidth. This is essential. You should use 14-bit lossless compression in this build and you can activate the UHS overclock module with options. You get to choose between 160, 192 and 240 MHz. I was able to use 142 MHz using Extreme Pro 95 megabits per second card. 240 didn't work for me and caused pink frames and major drop in speed after a couple of seconds. Some people claim that 240 could be possible on a 170 megabits per second version of the card, but I cannot confirm it, I don't have that. To lower possibility of pink frames appearing, try to turn off focus picking and overlays while recording. It helped me a bit. To sum it up, 160 MHz is recommended if you are going to use UHS overclock module, but you could also experiment with higher speeds at your own risk. And if you want to squeeze out even more resolution, you could go into a crop mode menu and lower the bit depth. You still need to use 14 bit lossless, but the recording bit depth would be lower. But in my opinion, this defeats the whole purpose of using raw recording. I actually want to squeeze out as much color information as possible. I want the picture to look pretty, even if the resolution is a little bit low. So this is not a compromise I would personally make, but for some other people, this does make sense because they don't see any difference. When you use abnormal resolution, focus dots might not be mapped inside the MLV app. The app won't be able to remove focus dots. If that's happening to you, activate 3x3 chroma smoothing and that should fix the problem with focus dots and other color artifacts. You should probably always check this option. So try it out yourself is what I'm saying. In the next video, I will try to look into a dual ISO, so make sure to subscribe and like. And a little bit of disclaimer. I'm just talking about what's possible on 700D using Magic Lantern experimental build. This option might not be for everybody and could potentially break the camera. So downloading a stable build from the website uh, might not yield the same results, but it will be more stable. So that's what's recommended. Good luck.